songs on Christmas Day. Old familiar carols play. Wild and sweet, the words repeat of peace on earth, good will to men. And thought how as the day had come, the belfries of old Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth. church. If you're brand new, my name is Chris Pasek, lead pastor here at Unite Community Church. Um, uh, look, have you heard 
we have our Christmas Eve services next week. Uh, now, if you're watching this online and recapping, it won't be next week, but look, on Christmas Eve in Washtenaw County and wind up, we are having church. And so here's my big ask for you guys, okay? Is I want you to come, get off the couch, get off home church, come celebrate with us and bring someone with you. It's no surprise that at this time of year, people are open to coming to church. And so listen to me, I wanna grow our church, but I want your friends, your family to discover and love who Jesus is even more. And so what I want you to do is pray about it, think about it, ask yourself, who do I know that would dare to come to church with me? And then next week, I want you to bring them. And I'm telling you what, we have just an awesome, fun, creative church service for you. After that, the Sunday after that, 26, we're gonna be doing all of our locations online, okay? So there will be no physical, in-person services on the 26th. Um, there's a bunch of different reasons for that. Um, essentially, we had to decide, are we gonna do Christmas Eve, or are we gonna do the 26th? Remember, we're portable, we're renting locations, there's a lot of logistics there. And so for us, we decided, you know what, we're gonna put all of our chips in the basket of Christmas Eve, and then the 26th, um, we have something really unique, really special for you guys to be enjoying church at home. And so with that, if you'll pray with me, and then we're going to dive in. Jesus, God, I thank you for online church. Uh, for people that might not be able to make it, maybe they're sick, maybe um, the COVID is in their family, uh, maybe they just are surfing the internet and they just found our YouTube and just found this, whatever it is, God, I thank you that we have the technology to be able to bring the Word of God into our homes. And so, God, for everyone watching, God, I pray that we'd open our hearts and we'd be willing to just take one more step to trust you, follow you, and dare we say, discover and love who you are a little bit more today because of what they've heard. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we're in this series called The Christmas I've Always Wanted, all right? And the idea behind that is, is to really come into the thoughts that if we pulled back and asked that question, what is the Christmas I've always wanted? It might look a little bit different than what you're living out. And so today what I want to do is I want to move us into the next step of this series. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about prayer. Okay, now, 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 before you shut me off and you're like, boring. Okay, hang tight, hang tight, hang tight. Let me back up and let me kind of set it up like this. Is can you go back to when you were a kid? Do you, was there like one gift, one present that at Christmas time, it was like you had to have it. It was like, I got to have it. And you did whatever it took to get that thing. Like, do you have that? Like maybe for you, it was a Sega Genesis. I can remember that was one of my gifts. Like Sega Genesis, it was like, got to have it, got to have it, got to have it. Um, I got it for my 10th birthday, not Christmas. So that was a whole nother thing. Um, but I remember that was a gift. Maybe uh, it was a board game. Uh, maybe it was a weenie whistle. You guys know what movie that's from? Um, but, but but I can remember way, probably when I think, but what's the first toy or the first present that I was like, I got to have it. It was the Optimus Prime Transformer. Now I'm talking about like the OG, the original, okay? Because like my kids, they're seven and nine. They, they get these Transformers these days that I'm like, I don't, I don't this, this thing stinks. I mean, it's it just isn't, I don't. But, but like back in the day, I mean, it was awesome, at least in my mind, because like, it was like a giant, what seemed like six feet tall Optimus Prime. Now, naturally, if you go back and look, it was about, you know, 18 inches, okay? But, but I can remember, I would go, and I remember what it looked like. I remember the red and the blue. I remember I knew how to transform that thing into a truck and then transform that thing back into a robot. And I didn't even have the gift. I didn't even have the toy, but I studied the commercials that were marketed to me, right? I looked at the catalogs. Like I remember for me everything about it. And I can remember the day I got it, right? Christmas morning, I remember opening the box. I can remember the color wrapping paper. I can remember when I opened the box, I remember the smell of the toy. I remember getting it out. I remember putting the decals on the thing. I remember everything about that moment. What I wanna get into though, is that what did it take to get me there, right? 
Like, what, what, what was the process, right? And what I want to walk you through is that if you have a gift or, or a thing that you're like, man, I would love that, okay? Maybe that's where you're at right now. You have something your spouse or your family member or someone you love is like, I would love you to buy me this, okay? There's a three-step process that I went through to get my mom and dad to buy me this gift. And the first pro- step was this. Stage one was the discovery, right? Like, I, there's a moment that if you want something, there's a moment of discovery when you just, it gets on your radar, right? Where it becomes like this thing that's out there and then it's a thing that's in here and you're like, I just got to have it, got to have it. I remember where I discovered this was the Montgomery Wards catalog. Anyone, guys, anyone, okay, I know I'm aging myself, okay? But before like computers, okay, like there was like actual physical catalogs and I remember this was way before Christmas, way before you got the newspaper with all the ads. I mean, it was the Montgomery Ward catalog. I mean, it's this thick. It's where I discovered Optimus Prime and bras, okay? Thank God, Optimus Prime won, okay? But I remember, I remember I was fixated on it, right? The stage one was discovery. Stage two is then the scheme. And this is in every Christmas movie, right? It's like you got to make the list. You got to check it twice, right? It's, it's like, you know what Santa's doing? But look, you're doing your own list. Right, and you make up your own scheme. And what happens, right, when we want a gift, we start to ask for it. We start to make little hints about it. We start to talk about it. For me and my Montgomery Ward catalog, I remember opening that sucker, getting a pen, and I remember circling that thing. And the next day, circling it again, and circling it again, and circling it again, like drawing arrows. Mom, this is what I want. I remember leaving the catalog on the counter, like, hey, my, oh, oh, mom, oh, dad, look what just happens to be in front of you. Make sure you know this is what I want. Number one gift, Optimus Prime, right? Right? And then stage three would set in the lead up to Christmas. And you know this is true because the stage three was then the persistence, right? It was like the daily agonizing begging, the reminding, right? Like if you have kids now that they really want something, right? Like your 10 year old, 11 year old that just desperately wants a phone. Come on, I gotta get a phone. I gotta get a phone, right? There's this persistence that comes and then Christmas day. Now here's what I wanna ask is that if you've ever had a moment like that where it's like, what's my gift? What's the thing? What's the one thing that I wanted? And then Christmas day comes and you got it. Here's a question is were you all that surprised that it was under the tree? Now, naturally, we're happy, you know what I mean? But like, but like, but like, when you grabbed the box, when you opened it, like, were you really that, like, oh, how did you know? Like, no, you know how they knew, because you reminded them, you were persistent, you discovered, you schemed, you were persistent, right? There was these process, right, where you, if you really think about it, it's not all that shocking that mom and dad bought me a $15 toy from Montgomery Wards because it was an easy win for mom and dad. And why are we talking about that? Because I think that when we think about our kid's story, that is what God wants in our God story. I really believe that with all my heart. And you might be thinking, what the heck am I actually talking about? But what I believe, okay, and this is me, okay? This is our church, this is UCC, okay? What I believe is that we exist to help you discover and love who Jesus is. And what I believe that as you discover and as you start to love, man, what I believe is that it bursts this relationship with him where it's not marked by rules and religion and a rigidness, but no, 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 it's a relationship that's fluid where you can be in sync with the creator of the universe. I really do believe that. And what I also believe is that what that creator of the universe wants is for you and I to be like little kids in prayer asking for whatever the heck we want or whatever our needs are in today. Do you understand that? Like, I believe that's what God wants. I know, I know we start to push back on that, but that's where the big idea comes. What I think what we're here to learn today is that when it comes to prayer, what I think what God wants from you, what I want for you, okay, is simply this, is to become a little asker. You hear that? To become a little asker, to become a little asker where we ask and ask again, and we ask and ask and ask and ask and remind and remind and remind, and through prayer, we pray 
and pray more and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. Go back to the whole entire kid thing, right? Like where our disposition to God is that we are like little kids on Christmas every single day, bowing our heads in prayer to help God see our needs, what we desire, and how he can come into our lives. Now, I know that can seem a little extreme, but that's where I want to crack open our Bibles. And I want us to jump into a text where Jesus starts to teach us about prayer. Because, because if we were to pull back, right, think about the question of Christmas I've always wanted. If you were to ask that question, here's what I know is that you probably have some needs here today. You have some things there. You know what? I, I probably need God to jump into that. Maybe you're wrestling with some uncertainty, maybe in your job, maybe in your relationships. You know, may, maybe you're dating someone and you're like, man, I don't, I don't really know. Or maybe that dating someone became now they're gone and that relationship is shattered. Maybe it's in your workplace where there's just uncertainty going out. They're restructuring things. Am I in or out? Maybe it's been a death in the family. Maybe it's that Christmas is starting to reveal some deep wounds in your heart that come from your family. Listen to me, I don't know what you walked in here with, but what I believe God wants when you think about those things is to be a little asker. What that means is bow our heads and we pray and ask God to get involved. And again, where do we get this from? Well, there's this story about Jesus in Luke chapter 11. Okay, and why we talk about Jesus and teach about Jesus, because my goal for you, okay, in our church is to just be like Jesus, is just do the things Jesus says to do. And what I love about Luke chapter 11 is that scripture says, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. Okay, so Jesus had this habit, okay, if you read through the New Testament, through Jesus' story, you got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, okay? Those are the books of the Bible that have Jesus' life recorded, okay? Jesus was always getting up in the middle of the night to go pray. He was not going to bed and going off to dark places to pray, okay? Jesus had this habit of prayer, praying, and just praying more. And Scripture says that one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Now, time out, because if you've ever wondered, what is prayer? How do I pray? What, what does it look like to pray right, right? Like, I mean, that's a great question, right? Jesus answers, and so lean in, because in verse 2, he said to them, when you pray, say, now think about this, you've heard of this, I know you have, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us of our sins, for we also forgive others who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation. Now, this is what's known as the Lord's Prayer. This is the more abbreviated version. But what's crazy about this is that this is the answer Jesus gives to a disciple that's going, Hey, Jesus, will you teach me how to pray? And into that, Jesus teaches us how we should pray. And in this text, if we get into it, rather than just saying it, right? But we're going to learn that prayer does two things. Jesus does two things here for us to learn. And the first thing is this, is why should we pray? Or what is prayer? Is number one is that prayer positions God as Lord. Now that's huge because oftentimes because of the familiarity of the Lord's prayer, Right? We miss the power of what God's actually saying. See, we turn the Lord's Prayer into a seance. Right? We've turned it into a song. Right? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Okay, I'll stop. Right? Right? But, but, but that's what's happened. Is that we've taken this literally where it's like, if we just repeat these words, then we're good. The problem is... That's not what Jesus was getting at. In fact, if you go back and just read Jesus' first concept of prayer, that if you want to be a little asker, meaning you want God to step into some moments, some things going on in your life, he says the first thing, your first words off your lips, is you should be saying this, Father. Father. Now time out, because I know some of us, when we hear the word Father, we think of our 
Earthly fathers, I want to be sensitive to that because some of us don't have a good taste in our mouths because of our earthly fathers. But what I want you to understand is that right here, the purpose of father is what Jesus was doing was he was setting us up to see that this is how we're to interact with God. That our disposition, and don't miss this, this is huge, is that we are God's kids and God is our father. That's huge. Understand the starting line, the baseline for our prayer has to be bathed in the relationship. Remember I said, we're not teaching a bunch of rules. I'm not trying to teach you a religion that if you say these words in the Lord's prayer, just like Jesus said, then poof, life will be magical. No, no, no. He's saying, no, 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 that you have a father. What does that mean? It means that when you and I come into a relationship with God, what that means is that when we admit we're sinners, right? We say, hey, God, I know that I'm a sinner. We confess our sins. Scripture says he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, right? And in that moment, we are forgiven. We're free. All the past, it's all gone. But at the same time, on this side of eternity, do you know what we receive? Scripture says we receive his spirit. Scripture says that he puts himself in us. Just like I'm trying to put myself into my kids, what God's position is. If you have received Christ, is that you are his kid and our relationship is that of a father, but not just like a strict like father, like you're mightier than me, but no, no, no. But also it's like a dad. We're again coming to this Romans 8 verse 14. It says this, for those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. So again, if you've prayed to receive Christ, you've been baptized, you have the spirit of God in you. He starts leading you, guiding you, right? Like you want more of God. He says that's because you're a child of God. The spirit you received does not make you a slave so that you live in fear again. But the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry. Watch this. Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Say that with me. I know we're online, but say it with me. Abba, Father, you know what that's saying? It, Abba in the Greek is like saying daddy. Think about the relationship between a tiny little kid. Daddy, daddy, daddy. It's reaching up. It's us looking up, right? And why is that the position to prayer? Think about that because who is God? God is a father that has a relationship with his kids just like a little tiny kid has with the dad where it's literally this daddy relationship. But it's not just that. It's also that God is, and because he's the father, because we're the kid, like this daddy mentality, okay? What that also is, and if you keep reading, Jesus is also trying to uh, help us understand that God's ways are not our ways. That he's a father doing something way bigger than we can ever see as a kid. And that's why the next thing Jesus says is, Father, hallowed, hallowed, hallowed be your name. That word hallowed literally means to be holy or set apart. Think about that and think about what's going on here because I think some of the issues that come, why prayer becomes such a weird thing or maybe it's something you've given up on because you're like, you know what, I don't know, God doesn't even listen to me. Or what's the point because God's going to do what he's going to do anyway? See, I think the problem with prayer is that oftentimes we treat God as if he's our butler. Hey God, here's my needs. Here's what I need from you. Hey God, here's this, here's that. You know, and all of a sudden it's like we have our plan. Hey God, bless it and let's move on. When understand that's not the point. Remember, the point is to realize you have a relationship. The point is to realize that there is this grandiose father that you start off to understand that we're his kids crying out, Abba, Daddy. Like I've heard people pray, hey, Daddy, hey, God, hey, Daddy, right? Like that's the position. But if that's the position, here's what we got to realize is that fathers know more than the kids. Fathers know more about the plan than the kids. And what a father's trying to do is raise that kid up so that he's not saying daddy anymore, but he's saying dad and father, there's an honor and respect. Don't miss that. That's what's happening here. Now, here's the question. What if, what if we started to pray this way? 
Like not just repeat a bunch of words like the Lord's Prayer, but what if we started to pray with this kind of prayer? Father, hallowed be your name. Hey, Daddy, you're bigger, you're better than me. What does that do? Well, it starts to right-size God. It starts to humble us. And then ultimately, it starts to align our hearts with God. Because what prayer does, number one, is prayer positions us to see God as a father. But the second thing prayer does is prayer positions us to follow. And this, to me, this is like the big X factor. Because again, the problem with humanity, okay, let me, just me, okay, is I don't like to be told what to do when I can already see what I think I should do. You know, you know what I mean? Like, like, like when I think I, I know the right answer, but then someone else comes along and is like, no, 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 go this way instead. Look, I, I'm not prone to that. And this is all of humanity, right? But even in little kids, it's still, it, that's true. It's just how it is. Like, like little Jude, my, my, he's eight now, eight years old. Not crazy. My youngest kid is eight. Okay. But the other day, uh, he's getting to where he's independent. Okay. And so for me, my parenting style, okay. Everyone's got a style is that when he's like, dad, I'm hungry. I'm like, get it yourself. Okay. Not, not cause I'm lazy, but it's cause I want my kids to not be needy. You know what I mean? And so the bottom line is he started, he makes himself a bowl of cereal. And to me, I think it's funny because here's this, he was at the time he did this, he was seven, but I mean, you got little seven year olds, big gallon of milk, you know, they got two hands and, and they drop it, spill it. And it, uh, to me, it's funny. Okay. I don't, my wife hates it, but I think it's funny when you spill the milk. So anyway, but this time he nailed it, nailed it. He got the Cheerios, put the Cheerios in there, right? Then he got the milk, poured the milk in there. I was like, Hey son, make sure you put things back. Right? So he puts everything back and he's walking from the kitchen all the way to the couch, like, like a proud kid, like dad, I did it. And then he then comes and he's like, I'm going to now walk to my spot on the couch. And he goes to cut into the couch, to get up on the couch, to walk behind mom, who's leaned forward to then sit next to mom. And I, and I see this, right? And so as I see him cut across the couch, just step one foot on the couch. I'm like, Whoa, son, what are you doing? He's like, Dad, I'm just going to my spot. And I'm like, well, hold on, son. You need to go around. And he's like, but Dad, the ottoman's there. I know, but go around the ottoman. You're going to spill it. And he's like, no, Dad, I'm just going to go right behind Mom. Mom's leaning forward. I'm like, son, you're doing it wrong. He's like, Dad, Dad, I got this. I'm like, son, go around. Go around. He's like, no, Dad, I'm fine. And as he's saying this, he turns back to say, I'm fine. As he turns, he's got one foot on one side of my wife, the other foot on my other side of my wife, and he, he loses his balance and just takes the whole bowl, the whole bowl, boom, right down her back. I mean, just boom. I mean, she's like, ah, she jumps up. I mean, it was great. But the point is, like we can say that's a funny little family moment, but it's so true that that's how we are with God, right? Like if we're praying, hey God, hallowed be your name. I need your help in some things. The reason prayer is so powerful, because if done in the way where we're trusting God as Abba Father, that He's caring for us, He wants the very best for us, and we can trust Him like a little kid trusts and says, Daddy. Oh, He might lead you to a place that you never thought you'd go, but we trust it's going to be the very best. And why would we do that? Because of prayer. What prayer does is it unlocks our hearts to be willing to follow God. And that's why if you keep reading, Jesus is teaching us a position of humility. That's what he's doing in this text. He's, he's going, hey, Father, hallowed be your name. Then watch this. Now here's the ask. He says, give us each day our daily bread. So God's saying, hey, because he's a father, look, it, you're going to ask. Be a little asker. All right, so he says, hey, give us. You need to be asking, hey, God, I need some things today. Give us our daily bread. Forgive us. There's another ask, right? First is to give. Second is to forgive us, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And then watch, and lead us. There's the third ask, right? Not into temptation. So what's he saying? He's saying, hey, God, give us. Hey, God, forgive us. Hey, God, lead us. Jesus is saying, hey, our position 
should be in such a posture where we're looking to God as a little asker, saying, God, you got to give to me. Hey, God, you need to forgive me. Hey, God, and then I need you to lead me because if you really look down at our messy lives, oftentimes, and this isn't all the time, but oftentimes we're in the mess we're in because we followed our own ways. And that's why Jesus is saying what we need to do is go, hey, God, I need you to give me what I need today, my daily bread. Like maybe you're needing some wisdom on a tough decision at work. Maybe you're needing wisdom on what to do with your job. Maybe you're needing wisdom, right? Or you just need help in your marriage. You're, hey, God, 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 you've got to give me, give me, give me what I need today. Second thing, God, you need to forgive me. God, I know I, man, I'm jacked it up. I have jacked up. God, forgive me. Help me to walk in your forgiveness. Meaning, look at all my past and realize that it's paid for, forgiven, sealed, delivered. It's done. God, forgive me and then lead me, right, out of temptation. God, lead me to the Christmas I've always wanted, the dreams, the things you've put in my heart. God, you've got to lead me. Now, don't miss this. Imagine if this was our position of prayer. Imagine what would happen if this was our prison. Father, Daddy, God, your little asker is saying, give me, like, lead me. I'm going to follow. What happens? You follow. And then bit by bit by bit, step by step by step, here's what I know is that God's spirit starts to move in our lives through the thick and the thin. And we're going to talk about a lot more of this on Christmas Eve. But I'm telling you what, the plans God have for you, will rock your world and blow your mind if you would just follow. Bit by bit, step by step. I'm telling you, that's how God works. Because if God was to jump into your life and just tell you the plan, I'm telling you, it would blow your mind. Like for me, I, I know for me, my story is simply this. Is that I remember when I was a senior in high school, okay, I got my foot caught. Now I got hockey ripped from me. I mean, it was part of my story. Again, we're going to get a lot more into that on Christmas Eve, but I'm telling you, but imagine if when things were going good, God jumped in and he started to tell me the plans he had for me. Like imagine when I was a freshman in high school, uh, our second game of the season, okay, I got a hat trick. Like, like it, was, it was crazy, 14 years old. Like I, I, It was like, woo, I was living the time of my life. Now imagine if that night God would have showed up and be like, hey, Chris, man, that was an awesome game, high five, chest bump. And I'm like, yeah, God, bro, I'm going to be a professional. He's like, no, you're going to be a preacher. Like I, All I can tell you is in that moment, like I'm going to hate that God because all I'm thinking is hockey, 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 right? But don't miss this. What has happened because I was willing to pray? What happened because I had a posture of following? Sure, I made a mess. Sure, I actually did get cut. Yes, hockey was removed from my life. Yes, then I did go live with some party animal people, did some party animal things, but don't miss this. Because of that experience, it's now birthed my story. We're believe this or not, but how I view our ministry at UCC is exactly how I view a hockey team. Okay, so we all have our own positions. We all work together as a unit. That's what we do. We're taking the offense to Satan. That's what we do. I think about how we do church. Okay, you guys want to know the thrust of why we do what we do? It's because I showed up to church and was bored. And then when I met Jesus, I brought all my party friends to church and they were bored. And I thought, oh my gosh, why are we doing church boring? And so for better, for worse, your adrenaline junkie pastor, hockey pastor, party pastor, look, who I preach to is the party boy. Who I want to do church for? The party people. What I want to do every Sunday is light up the band, have a party, it's a Jesus party, and lead people to Jesus. That's what I want to do, right? Like that's who I am. Am, but don't miss this, had I not been willing to follow bit by bit by bit, I would have never lived out my story. Again, God couldn't have showed up when things were going well and say, hey, Chris, hockey player, pastor. That didn't happen. It threw ups and downs of life, having a posture of God, your father, hallowed. Like, God, you can see a plan I can't. And I might be hurting in this moment. Or I might be on a high this moment, but God, you know what? I'm going to have a position of humility where I take my eyes off the problem, take my eyes off myself, take my eyes off this earth, and cry out, Abba, Father, Daddy. 
Just give me what I need today. Forgive me of my sins today. And then lead me. Lead me. Lead me where you want to go. And then here's the challenge. Is that would you be willing to pray like this? Would you be willing to be a little asker? Would you be willing to pray like this? And I'm not just talking about today, but I'm talking like, go back to the thing. Like, let's discover. Like, the three steps, right? Like, the, the gift. What's discover? You got to think, hey, what do you need God to do? Like, just think about it. The Christmas I've always wanted. What, what, what do you need this Christmas season God to do? And then number two is the scheme. What's the scheme? The scheme is prayer. The scheme is ask. The scheme is do whatever you can to remind God, to tell God, to help God. Like you scheme, you plan, you pray, 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 you pray. And then the third thing is, and this is the key, the persistence. Are you willing to pray tomorrow? Are you willing to pray a week from now? Are you willing to pray in a year, the same prayer you're praying today, dare I say three years, five years, would you be willing to live a life where you're praying just enough to follow God bit by bit, step by step. Because as you continue this text, and we're going to wrap up with this, is that persistence is what wins the day. And I'm convinced the reason that we've stopped believing in prayer, the reason many people have stopped praying, is because they think God's not hearing. But what I think God's doing is God's wanting you to keep praying. Where again, if you just keep reading, Remember, Jesus just said the Lord's Prayer. He's teaching the disciples about prayer. He's saying, hey, when you pray, say these things, right? Have this posture, this positioning, and then watch this, verse 5. Then Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, let me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside says, don't bother me. The door's already locked and my children and I are already in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. Okay, and so get this picture. Okay, Jesus is teaching us about prayer and he goes into this story where he's like, there's this guy who has some unexpected guests. He goes, I have nothing to feed you. So he goes to his neighbor's house, starts pounding on the door. Hey, hey, will you give me some food? I got some unexpected guests. The guy's going, no. <laughs> I'm already in bed, I'm already sleeping, and then watch what comes out. I tell you, this is Jesus, he says, I tell you that even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, this is huge, yet because of your shameless audacity, think about that, because you're a little asker, because you're persistent, because you won't stop knocking, because it's the middle of the night and you're just pounding on the door going, hello, hello, open, open, you've got to do something. It says, because of the shameless audacity being coming the little asker, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. Now, what is Jesus talking about? He's talking about prayer. He's teaching us that our position should be, in one, we view him as God, Father God, Daddy God. Two, that we should be willing to follow wherever he's leading because he's got a plan way bigger than our plan. But as we follow, bit by bit by bit, step by step by step, we're called to be little askers. That annoying, unbearable, audacious, shameless kid asking for presents on Christmas. That should be how we pray. So back to the question, the Christmas I've always wanted, what do you need God to do in your life? And here's the challenge, pray. Pray tonight when you go home. Pray in the morning, pray in the afternoon, pray in the evening, pray. When you're sick of praying, pray some more. And when you're sick of praying that much, pray some more. You just pray and you pray and you pray and you pray because it positions you to align your heart with a daddy who wants the very best for you and gives you the boldness to follow. Let's pray. Jesus, God, as we go into the Christmas week, God, the kids are getting out of school. Uh, There's going to be a lot of things happening this next week. But God, I pray that we would be little askers. God, what you put on my heart as a pastor of this church is that we lead our church to prayer. And so God, the things that are happening in our hearts, God, I know even in our church, God, we've felt the sting of death. God, we've felt the sting of sickness. I have friends that are sick, friends that are hurting. 
God, I have friends that are in homes, jobs. God, there's just a lot flying. There's pressure. I don't know where it comes from, but God, I want us to be prayer warriors. I want us to be praying people. I want us to be little askers. And God, I pray for the boldness and audaciousness for our church, our people, to come boldly before your throne because that's what you've entitled us to do. God, I'm not teaching my wisdom, but God, your words. And so we ask, just like in this text, you're saying that this guy is going to give us all we need. God, I pray that you would give us our daily bread. Forgive us as we forgive others. And lead us, not into temptation, but God, to your throne. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Man, I love you guys. Look, Christmas Eve is next week. All right, and so do whatever you can to get there. Invite a friend, bring a friend, bring family. It's going to be an awesome, awesome time as we smile, as we celebrate, and as we hear all that God's doing in the life of our church and in your life. Man, I love you guys. If you need anything, you can email us at info at unitecommunitychurch.com. Download our app, and you can always hit the Get Connected or I've Decided button. Man, we love, love, love you guys. Merry Christmas. We'll see you Christmas Eve.